Okay. Here is Asini Manso. Asini Manso. As we are coming, you saw a lot of Asin. It's a traditional area. So if the people here they want to call this and they say Manso, because they know that you know it's Asin Manso, Asin Fosu was where we stopped and got the, the snacks. Here the where we are barricaded was a big slave market. Probably the largest slave market closer to the coast because the Cape Coast and Almina dungeons took most of the slaves that are from Ghana. And you have many more slaves in the central and western, I mean, uh, dungeons in the central and western part of Ghana, central region and the western region. The graves here you are seeing are the, the, the purpose of these graves, ancestors lying down here for eternity for which we are here to pay them a homage. Mm -hmm. Because this was a market, when the Europeans or the slave raiders brought in their merchandise, I say this with all apology, mm -hmm. here for sale, imagine they walking through the bushes from all over direction with torn clothes. Uh, scars, blood oozing out. Mm -hmm. Now they got here because they were just about to be, to, to be let out. Then they look at this and say, no, you don't look nicer to be let out. So what they did was they marched them down to a stream, which is about five minutes walk down, just behind me. They washed them down. After washing them down, then they will smear them with oil, palm kernel oil, mm -hmm. or whatever oil they had. You smear them so that they look brighter and shinier, so that they could fetch much money. This they did not for because of the people's welfare, it was a marketing strategy that they used. I was just about to take your job. Hey, green my brother. How are you? How you doing? This is my boss. So if my boss is in don't charge, don't worry, don't worry. Let's take this. Ago. Wow, I like, I love the energy. Uh, <laughs> as we all know, you welcome to the central region of Ghana, a Saint Martin's Slavery site. I'm going to rush a little bit because of the rain, uh, because yes, uh, so you should bear with me. Uh, I'm Kofi. Most of you know my name, oh. Kofi, because I was born on Friday, and Fridays are always the best. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we start with the tour, I guess you've observed a minute of silence, right? Have you already observed a minute of silence? Yeah. Okay, let's observe a minute of silence for our brothers and sisters who lost their lives during the trip. So after that, I say, may their soul rest in perfect peace, and we all here respond by saying, Ashini. So please, a minute of silence. Yeah. For a moment. Yeah. May the souls of our great ancestors rest in perfect peace. Ashini. Okay, so now as we all know, during the 15th and the 16th century thereafter, our brothers and sisters were entered, we were captured and were treated as merchandise. We were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations in the Americans and the Caribbeans. Now, as St. Mansu you see today was the biggest slave market during the transatlantic slave trade era, as documented by one British historian known as W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. Although there were some slave markets like the Piccolo slave markets at the Upper East region of Ghana, Salaga market at the northern part of Ghana, Kitikachi market and other markets as well. Asin Manso slave markets here in the central region of Ghana and the Salaga market at the northern part of Ghana played a major role during the trade. So enslaved Africans were captured from Ghana and countries that share border with Ghana at the north, that is Burkina Faso, Mali, some parts of Nigeria, and we were made to walk in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked to the Salaga market at the north. So it was in the Salaga market that we were given the first opportunity to rest just for a few minutes and again we were made to walk in chains and shackles from Salaga to Asin Mansuya which was 300 miles by foot. Oh. Yes. <laughs> now during that era, because we were marching through the forest parts of our country, a lot of our brothers and sisters were exposed to many dangers while marching us from the north to Asin Manso. Some of us were bitten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishment and cruelty from the slave raiders. According to our history, a lot of our brothers and sisters that were made to march from Salaga to Asin Mansuya lost our lives. One of our biggest challenges was crossing the Pra River. 
Are you coming from Kumasi? Yes, come on. You saw the Pryor River? Yeah, when you come from Kumasi, you see a river on your way. It's called the Pryor River. That is one of our greatest challenges. It was basically the survivor and the fittest. Yeah. So those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't concern with the journey, mm -hmm. we were brought out of our chains and shackles and were dumped in that river to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we landed here at Ascent Man, so this was a place that we were sorted out according to age and gender. Men separated from the boys, women, children, etc. And in determining our ages, a device called the Speculum Oris is put into our mouth, mm -hmm. open our mouth, count our teeth, thereby forecasting our ages. Like a horse? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After which, we were made to take our last bath here, which was supposed to be our last bath, before being sold to the merchants. After selling us again, we were made to march to the Cape Coast Castle, which was 35 miles from here, because that was where the slave ship was being docked. Now, as we all know, during that era, whenever we were captured, it was a match of no return. You're going from your roots and never coming back. So when you're taken through the dungeons of the castle, there's this door with the inscription, the door of no return. Basically, that door of no return are not just worse. They mean so much that we have to be conscious to know the important meaning, the real meaning of those words. Because with the door of no return, they thought you're never going to come back to tell the story as it is. They thought all the atrocities that they, they were committed on us would never be able to overcome all those atrocities. They thought our culture and traditions as Africans would be cleaned forever. Basically, they wanted to eliminate the African race from their setting, just like they did to us in Argentina when systematically they took the black race out of their community. But now that you and I are conscious enough to know ourselves, mm -hmm. conscious enough to know where we are coming from, and conscious in enough to know our ancestors, then there's a need for us to change that right and that perception on the walls of the castle from the door of no return that favors them to the door of return which favors us. Because now I have my brothers and sisters coming back to your roots as at when you love to return. But the big question is, how do we change the writings on the walls of the castle? That is why, as you can see in our ancestral graveyard, we have the mortal remains of our two great ancestors, Madame Crystal of Jamaica and Samuel Carson of the U.S. of A. Madame Crystal was captured and ended up in Jamaica as a slave African. But because she was a mother, she couldn't bear seeing all these people going through pain and more treatment. All the punishment that was meted on one another was so much for this lady to contain. So in a way, she decided to rebel against the act by starving herself to death. But during that era, whenever you try doing such, there's a punishment which is meted on you to serve as a deterrent from your other captives from doing the same. They chisel your teeth and they force you to feed, which yeah. is called a force feeding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This and other punishments Madame Christa, Madame Christa have to endure. But because she was fighting for a just cause, she never took in anything until she lost a life. We have the descendants of Madame Christa visiting every 27th of December just to pour libation and say to their ancestors, Medase, which means thank you. Medase. Yes. At the far end, we have Samuel Carson, the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the US Navy. He died at the age of 35 years, but he wasn't given a befitting barrier because he was one of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in 1998, when this place was open, not until 1998, nobody was allowed to go through this part, apart from the chiefs, the chief priests, and a few traditional elders because we believe that the strength of this community lies right where we go, we go in. So not until 1998 when this place was opened up, their families consulted our Ministry of Tourism and they told us about the wish of their great-grandparents, that it was in their wish that they needed to be buried right on their ancestral route. Right. Mm -hmm. So in collaboration with their two families and our Ministry of Tourism, their mortar remains was thrown in from Jamaica and U.S. to the Kutuka International Airport, then by boat through the Atlantic Ocean to the Cape Coast Castle, through the dungeons coming out of the door of no return, changing into the door of return on the 31st day of July, 1998. The same day we landed here at Asen Manso. Asen is a word in Akan, which means travelers or people that are just passing through. So according to our history, the majority of the people that made this community were some of the captives who managed to escape. But because we didn't know how to return to where we were captured, we formed part of this community. So when these two of our ancestors landed here, we knew them already as our ancestors. We had a vigil for them. And the following day, which was the 1st of August, these two of our great ancestors were buried here. So every 1st of August is when Ghana as a nation, we decided to celebrate our emancipation festival. Mm -hmm. So in this community, we don't celebrate any other festival apart from the emancipation festival. We would have loved to have the mortal remains of our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, but just imagine bring all the mortal remains here. So those of our brothers and sisters who have been incriminated, for them when they come here, we give them the opportunity to, to sprinkle their ashes 
right in this ancestral graveyard. Mm. So this is not just the mother, the graveyard of Madame Christa and Samuel Cousin, but thousands of our ancestors have sprinkled their powder, their, their powder on this ancestral path. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's not going to rain, and even if it's rain, we have to do it. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to go through the ancestral routes. Uh, I guess I have to tell you every 10 years so that when you go, it should be straight, so that, yes. Whilst going through this part all the way to the river, it's called ancestral roots. I'll show you when I go there, when I get there, I'll tell you this is ancestral roots. It was developed by the feet of our ancestors. So most of times, as Africans as we are, nobody can convince me that we are we were able to survive because we were stronger and because we were brave. No. Mm -hmm. For me, I believe that there was some spirit that was that was with us, which we cannot even define that spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit was so strong, so strong that even when we were weak. The spirit always motivates and encourages us. So you can never understand who an African is when you look at us at the face value. For you to know who we are, you have to connect with our spirit. So as spiritual as we are, whenever we are going through that ancestral path, it is not bind binding on us though, but we go with our shoes off. I'll give you the reasons why we go with our shoes off, and it's up to you to take your own decision. The first reason that we go with our shoes off I'm, I'm talking for myself because I don't know you, so let me talk for myself. For me, I believe that my ancestors were not selfish. Because if they were, through all the pain and humiliation, they could have taken their lives and they'll not be you and they'll not be me. They knew all the pains that they were going through, but they were, their motivation was from you. Because they knew they have to live for you to yeah. tell their story. That's right. They knew they have to survive all those atrocities so that when they can't, even just a whisper to you, you can bring their issue out to the front. Mm -hmm. They knew that it is at the back of our ancestors that you and I are alive today. So today, if our ancestors are fought for us and for us, we have alternatives to be wearing different kind of shoes. Mm -hmm. But our ancestors were not given that privilege. Right. So when we are coming to our ancestors, we don't come to them to mock them. We come to them for them to fortify us. Yeah. So as a form of respect, we walk through their same path because we cannot even walk through their same path. Yeah. But we are just walking as a sort of as a, as a sign of respect and tell them, for us, we still believe in you as our ancestors. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second reason why we go with our shoes off is basically covenant. The land that you are working on is yours. Mm -hmm. But because of circumstances, that is why you are not in here. So, but today, if destiny has brought you back to your roots, mm -hmm. then there's a need for you to have a covenant with your own land. How do you get a covenant with the land? By walking barefooted so that the soil of the ground will rub under your feet right. for your ancestors to know you by your real name, not by your slave name. Right. And they will say to themselves, indeed, this is my, my daughter, Ephia, who has come to his roots. This is my son, Kofi, who has returned. This is my son, Kojo, who, is, who has come back to his roots. So if that happens, it makes your ancestors so much excited that when you heard about their story, when you heard about where they are coming from, you never sat in somewhere and enjoy yourself, but you came to search. The third reason, just an experience. So when you have the opportunity to say it to your brother, you say it from your heart, but not from your head. Yeah. Most of our ancestors were buried there, and you can't go to your ancestral side before without alerting them. So whilst we're going, it's a way of alerting them that you are coming. Mm -hmm. So before you get there, your garden angel is already seated, yeah. waiting to answer whatever you brought on board. So I made it, I said everything here so that we make our journey straight from here to the river. Okay. So, please, can you follow me? Let's continue. Yes, and before we go on, can we take a group picture? That way, that way we stay from taking it when we get back. Okay. So where are you going to take it? Right here, family. Uh, group up, organize. And just one picture, and we share it. Uh, not that simple. We are... Uh, we... And also spread out along the even path. Too many people on the right side. And uh, don't block the graveyard sign. Okay. About 10 people from this side need to go on this side. Just family, organize the balance.